Hi everyone. In this video we're going to talk about cross-site scripting, uh, which is one of the top vulnerabilities found in web applications. Um, I'm looking here at the OWASP Top 10 uh, 2017 uh, edition. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, go ahead and Google for OWASP Top 10. It's uh, one of the most widely used references when it comes to web vulnerabilities. And on this page, it shows the description of um, something which is uh, called cross-site scripting. And it shows the different uh, threat agents and attack vectors here. You can see that uh, this is highly exploitable with an exploitability level of three. And it's so because automated tools can detect it and most of them can also um, exploit it. It's very prevalent, so it has a high prevalence and a high detectability. And um, it's you can see here, it's found in around two thirds of all applications. And there's uh, automated tools that can automatically detect it in some technologies. Um, from a technical perspective, uh, it's not very difficult to execute such an attack. Uh, it's at level two, so um, it's um, a bit harder than uh, super easy. Uh, from a business perspective, it's not clear what the impacts are. It depends on the different uh, application. There's three types of uh, cross-site scripting. One is called reflected <coughs> cross-site scripting, where um, an application basically outputs unsanitized uh, user input as part of the HTML output and uh, this is interpreted uh, by the victim's browser and the JavaScript is executed. There's stored cross-site scripting which basically uh, first requires an attacker to store uh, JavaScript, um, a piece of JavaScript code in somewhere in like the database of that application and later the victim loads that page and is infected. And then there's uh, DOM cross-site scripting, uh, which is uh, similar to refracted cross-site scripting, but in this case, the document object model, the DOM, of the uh, vulnerable, vulnerable application is uh, modified uh, by injecting malicious JavaScript into it, and uh, it's interpreted by the uh, browser. So there's different ways uh, of uh, preventing this. And uh, again, OWASP has an awesome cheat sheet uh, that shows you how to prevent it in very different ways, um, adding one on top of the other. And there's also the content security policy, which is a defense in depth um, approach uh, to protect against cross-site scripting. So if we just take a look at um, the cheat sheet, we open it here, which is basically a vulnerable web application um, written in JavaScript, which is an Angular application and um, also uses Node.js and a whole lot of other, te other technologies. And it's meant for training purposes. Um, you can basically clone the code from uh, GitHub and then start playing with it. So for this uh, video, I'm, I basically uh, cloned the code of Juice Shop from GitHub, and um, I have it here in my um, code editor. So I basically cloned the code here, and I was able to, to start it. So just uh, an interesting tip is that if you run um, npm, it's going to run the application. All right. So it's running it on port 3000 here, which means it can go here and load localhost port 3000. Right. And here's the juice shop. I can click on different products. I can see the about page I can go back to the main page there's an account login can register okay so the first um, challenge in this application is to find the scoreboard which you can find 
entering scoreboard. And here you can see there's different challenges. The first challenge, as I said, was scoreboard is to find the scoreboard page, which is quite easy to find. So I solved that. And I also uh, looked at the cross-site scripting attack, where I basically took, you need to take this piece of code here and to find um, some text field in the application where you can input this and um, create an attack, right? So uh, the first thing I saw was this search field. I'm going to input it there. And voila, this is a pop-up showing the message which, uh, which is typed inside of this uh, JavaScript alert message, XSS. So that shows that the, the application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Just to show you that, that this is not, uh, this can be changed. I'm sure we can write here whatever, and then whatever comes up in the pop-up, right? So this is dangerous because attackers could just change this alert to sending something like uh, the, your cookie contents to their uh, remote server and this way they could steal your credentials or your cookies and you don't want that, right? So how do we fix this, right? So what I notice here is that when you input this in the text field, right, it appears here in the query, right? And it appears um, with some URL escaped characters but is basically ready to execute. So what we would want to do is sanitize this input here so that it no longer appears in the query up here, right? And one way we could do that is uh, looking at this OWASP cheat sheet for cross-site scripting and of course implementing all the different rules. But on the other hand, we know that this uh, juice shop application is an Angular application and I'm suspecting that Angular has a way to sanitize inputs, right? So if we, if we look for Angular Sanitize DOM, yeah, we're going to find something like DOM Sanitizer for Angular, right? And you can see here, helps prevent cross-site scripting bugs by sanitizing values to uh, be safe to use in different DOM contexts. Awesome. So this is a class and it has a sanitize function which we can call, it returns a string, it takes a string in a security context as an input. Let's see a bit more about that. So sanitize is a value for use in a given security context. And we can see here security context, there's different security contexts. Okay, we're going to use HTML for the DOM. Um, all right, so going back here, yeah, we're going to use this function basically in our application. All right, so where do we use the function, right? So we know that this search is vulnerable. I'm going to go to the application here. So where do I look? All right, so I need to do, I'm going to look for the search box, right? So let me just type in search. Okay, this returns 543 results in 80 files. That's a lot. Just looking through the results here, you see a lot of different things. And what is interesting here, there's a search bar. Okay, there's a search bar. I'm gonna do a search bar just to refine the search. Okay, so there's, there's the search bar here. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Awesome. So this is the search bar where basically uh, click to search and on enter there's this function called search which takes in a value, right? So this value I'm betting is not sanitized inside of this search function. So we're going to look for this search function. So we're going to look for search and opening bracket. All right. So there's a bunch of calls to functions here. Right. This is a call. Another call. There's mainly just calls to functions. 
there's no function definition so I'm gonna put a space because you can put a space in between search and the parentheses alright so here there's a function declaration inside of navbar.components.ts and this is our search function right and it takes as input a string value and if the value is different from empty basically constructs this query parameters passing it directly the value which is not sanitized right and then it navigates to search and those query parameters otherwise it just goes to search if it's empty all right so what we need to do here is use to sanitize this input value before it's being passed um, and navigated to right so we're going to use the DOM sanitizer, right? And we can see that the DOM sanitizer in Angular is at this in this package. I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to go at the top of this file and I'm going to import DOM sanitizer from, oops, from that location, which I just copied before. It's grayed out because it's not being used yet. I need to instantiate this DOM sanitizer inside of the constructor. So here's the constructor. It has a lot of things which it's initializing. So I'm just going to add private sanitizer. We can pick whatever name you want here. And DOM sanitizer. That's the type. All right. So I'm going to use the sanitizer lower inside of the search function, right? So here inside of the search function, if the value is not empty, I'm going to declare a variable called sanitized value, which is of type string. And I'm basically going to use this dot sanitizer and we're going to use the sanitize method as we saw before, right? So the sanitize method was the one here. And it takes a security context, right? Which we saw was an enum. So let's use security context here. Dot. We said we're going to use HTML. And then the second parameter is the string value. So we're going to use value, right? And this should return a sanitized string which we're going to use over here, right? Okay. So now this value is not being used anymore. We're going to use the sanitized value, right? And we're going to, the query parameters are now going to be sanitized, right? So if someone inputs a, uh, some, some code in, in the query parameters, it's going to be sanitized away. So let's save this. And we can see when I saved, it's compiling. Right, and it's compiled successfully. So go ahead. it's now running on a different port. So let's go to that port. That is actually the application which is running the uh, fixed code. So okay, you can see it's running here as well. Core board. All right. I'm gonna copy the code from here. And paste it here. All right, so now it's it doesn't work anymore. You can see the query is empty. And just to show you that it it actually works, if you input something legit, which is not malicious, you can see there's apple, there's banana. You can input just one letter if you want a. Okay, probably everything contains an a. But again, if you input that malicious code, which could be something or whatever, doesn't work anymore, doesn't uh, show the pop-up anymore. So that means that our, sanitize, uh, our uh, DOM sanitizer is actually doing its job and it's sanitizing this input value string, right? So that's it. Um, hope you like the tutorial. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what other uh, vulnerabilities I should show you how to patch.